Welcome to the musculoskeletal system. The musculoskeletal system gives the body its shape, uh, allows the body to move, protects the major organs of the body. Uh, obviously, it consists of all of your muscles and all of the bones, joints, ligaments in your body. Let's see here. The skeletal system uh, consists of 206 bones of varying types. Bones serve as the body's storage location of minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. Many bones have a hollow cavity that contains a substance called bone marrow. Bone marrow produces the body's blood cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are all produced in the bone marrow. And these illustrations. Um, we look at the appendicular skeleton, which uh, is a uh, bluer color, and um, the rest is the axial skeleton. Appendicular, if you broke that down, um, it's the appendages, which are your extremities. <coughs> the skeletal system is divided into these two groups. Uh, the axial skeleton is the part of the skeleton that includes the skull, spinal column, sternum, and ribs. The appendicular skeleton is made up of the upper and lower extremities, the arms, legs, the shoulder girdle, and the pelvic girdle. The shoulder girdle is the bony arch formed by the collarbones, the, which are, you may hear people, uh, you know, the technical term is clavicles, um, and the shoulder blades, which you know, we should refer to as scapulas. The pelvic girdle is made up of bones that enclose, that enclose and protect the organs of the pelvic cavity. It provides a point of attachment for the lower extremities and major muscles of the trunk. It also supports the weight of the upper body. An important thing with the, with the pelvic girdle to remember is it's actually several bones, but it appears to be one bone when you're looking at it. Um, Remember, we also have the skull and the spinal column, which protect the nervous system. Let's see here. I'm just going to scan through PowerPoint real quick. I want to see. OK, good. We will go over that a little more in depth here in a second. Bones are classified by their shape and size. Um, you've got long, short, flat, and irregular bones. Long bones are the relatively cylindrical bones of the upper and lower extremities, such as the humerus, or you know, the humerus is the upper arm. Um, short bones can be found in the carpal bones of the hands and the tarsal bones of the feet. The shoulder blades, which are your scapula, is the, fa is the flat bone, not fat bone, the flat bone and the vertebrae and um, the sphenoid bone um, from the skull are examples of irregular bones, just because they really don't have a shape that consists with any of the other ones. The skull is made up of two main groups of bones, the bones of the cranium and the bones of the face. The cranium contains eight bones that house and protect the brain. Um, it's important when you are learning the bones of the cranium to remember that the bones of the cranium also reflect to some degree the bones, uh, or I'm sorry, not the bones, but the parts of the brain. You know, for example, the frontal bone, which is your forehead, um, correlates to the frontal portion of the brain. Uh, you have two parietal bones, which are on the top of your, the top sides of your of your cranium, and then you have two temporal bones, which are on the lower sides, or just beneath the parietal bones. And then you have an occipital bone, which is the back portion of your brain. Er, excuse me, brain. It's the back portion of your cranium. And the uh, sphenoid bone is the bottom portion of the cranium. It's actually the floor of the cranium, and the ethmoid bone is also there on the floor of the cranium, and the ethmoid bone is also around the nasal septum. 
The skull is supported by the neck, which receives its strength from the vertebrae. Attached to the skull are many facial bones, uh, muscles attached to these bones that allow eye movement and facial expressions. Uh, these muscles also allow the tongue to be held in position so that uh, airway remains open when these important mouth muscles, a, excuse me, without these important mouth muscles, a person would not be able to swallow food or fluids without gagging or choking. The face contains the following face contains the following bones. Uh, the face contains the following bones. You've got the orbits, which are your eye sockets. Uh, you've got the nasal bones, which uh, right about the upper bridge of your nose. The maxilla, which is the upper part of your jaw. And um, the mandible, which is the lower part of your jaw. That's the part that um, actually is doing most of your movement, you know, as you sit in here listening to me talk, that's the part that's moving. Um, the zygomatic bone, which is your cheekbones. The mandible is the largest and strongest bone on the face. It's the only movable bone on the face. Uh, the ear actually contains six different bones, which are located in the middle ear and are called the auditory ossicles. The tongue is anchored to the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not connect to another bone. And um, what it does is that actually holds your airway open. The spine, your vertebral col your ver vertebral column, is made up of 32 to 33 vertebrae that are arranged in regions. The vertebrae of each region have a distinctive shape. The vertebral column is made up of seven cervical vertebrae, which are the top part. You'll often hear them referred to as C1 through C7. Twelve thoracic vertebrae, often referred to as T1 through T12. Five lumbar vertebrae, uh, referred to as L1 through L5. And five fused vertebrae that form the sacrum. And three to four fused vertebrae that form the cosex, which is your tailbone. A quick way I used to remember it is um, you eat breakfast at 7, lunch at noon, dinner at 5. So breakfast, cervical spine, lunch, thoracic spine, and dinner, lumbar spine. And then you have 5 sacrum and 3 to 4 cosex bones. The 7 cervical vertebrae of the neck hold up, hold up the head and allow it to rotate left to right as well as move backward and forward and side to side. On the scene of an emergency, uh, rescue is often referred to the cervical spine as the C-spine. You often hear somebody say, you know, I need you to grab C-spine. And that's to ensure that there is no uh, injury that occurs to the C-spine. The first cervical vertebrae, the atlas, supports the skull. And the second cervical vertebrae is the axis. The 12 thoracic vertebrae form the upper back and posterior portion of the thorax. Below the thoracic vertebrae, you have uh, five lumbar vertebrae. Uh, it's important to remember with the thoracic vertebrae, you've, um, each one of your thoracic vertebrae connect to a rib. The lumbar vertebrae are the largest and strongest of the vertebrae because they carry the bulk of the, lo the body's load. Below the lumbar vertebrae are the five fused vertebrae that form the sacrum, the back of the pelvis, and eventually attach to the three to four fused vertebrae that form the cosex. The fused sacral vertebrae are connected to the pelvis, which attaches to the lower appendicular skeleton and the axial skeleton. Between the vertebrae are discs that are made up primarily of water and account for 25% of the height of the spinal column. These discs are tiny pads that cushion the vertebrae and help protect the spinal nerves as they exit the spinal cord at openings between the vertebrae. The spinal nerves exit the spinal cord at openings between the vertebrae. They send signals to the body's muscles and organs. 
this picture here actually shows a dissected spinal cord and roots of the spinal nerves. They actually had an exhibit uh, a couple years back, uh, Bodies in Motion, and went and saw it in Cincinnati, one across the country. But if you ever get a chance to see it, it's great. They actually have um, every possible angle of the body uh, set up. They actually have an entire spinal cord plucked out and uh, preserved in silicone. The chest, or the thorax, is made up of 12 thoracic vertebrae, 12 pairs of ribs, and the breastbone, which is your sternum. These structures form the thoracic cage, which protects the organs within the thoracic cavity, such as the heart, lungs, and major blood vessels. I heard they're kind of important. All the ribs are attached posteriorly by ligaments to the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, pairs 1 through 10 are attached anteriorly to the sternum. Pairs 1 through 7 are attached anteriorly to the sternum by cartilage and are called true ribs. Rib pairs 8 through 10 are attached to the cartilage of the seventh rib. These ribs are called false ribs. And pairs 11 and 12 are not attached, and these are often referred to as floating ribs. The sternum uh, consists of three sections. Uh, the top portion is the manubrium. It connects to the clavicles and the first rib. The, so the, let me see. the superior portion of the sternum is attached to the clavicles, which joins the axial skeleton to the appendicular skeleton. The middle portion of the sternum is known as the body. And the lower portion, if you can see that little tip at the bottom, that is known as the xiphoid process and uh, makes up the inferior portion. This landmark is extremely important when um, utilizing and teaching CPR.